people of Nkano East, Nkano West, Federal Constituency, and are from Enugu State. I rise to move that a bill for an act to provide for the protection of human rights online to protect internet users in Nigeria from the infringement of their fundamental freedoms and to guarantee application of human rights for users of digital platforms and for other related matters be read a second time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I represent Daura, my Adua Sandamu Federal Constituency of Kazana State. As a speaker, I stand to support the bill proposed by Dr. Ujama. I so support. <laughs> House is safe, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I'm Honorable Dr. Chukwemeka Ujam, representing the good people of Nkano East and Nkano West Federal Constituency, and I'm from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, a bill for an act to provide for the protection of human rights online to protect internet users in Nigeria from infringement of their fundamental freedoms and to guarantee application of human rights for users of digital platforms and or digital media and for other related matters. There are quite a number of international documents and charters that Nigeria as a nation subscribes to as a member of the International Committee of Nations that seeks to make the access to and freedom on the internet a right of citizens. The United Nations Human Rights Council in 2012 adopted a new resolution on the promotion, protection and enjoyment of human rights on the internet. The African Charter on Human and People's Rights, recognizing the African Charter on Human and People's Rights of 1981, the Windhoek Declaration on Promotion on an independent and pluralistic African press of 1991, the African Charter on Broadcasting of 2001, the Declaration of Principles on Freedom of Expression in Africa of 2002, and the African Platform on Access to Information Declaration of 2011, and the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection of 2014, advocates for openness, internet access and affordability, and freedom of information. The Digital Rights and Freedoms Bill is a proposed law that is intended to guard and guide the today's users of the internet in terms of his freedom, his or her freedom, safeguarding his rights and his protection against any form of infringement. The bill is a 41-page document divided in 26 sections, including an interpretation section to conveniently convey the intendments of the proposed legislation. The bill is divided in seven parts. Each part is to assist for ease of reference to any part of the bill. The first part of the bill details the preliminary goals of the bill, which includes its objectives, application, that is to say those who the bill intends to directly affect, the interpretation and the short title. The second part deals solely with fundamental rights and freedom. Here, the bill focuses on the use of private data and what will amount to infringement in its use by also providing for expository explanations on what will constitute an offense by carefully defining them. The third part explains the offenses and punishments. The fourth part of the bill explains its mode of administration and enforcement, which will not only see the bill when passed into law as effective, but also ensure that it's optimally implemented. The fifth part also discusses jurisdiction and international cooperation on the bill. Considering the nature of this bill in addressing digitalization, which is a major tool of globalization in today's world, this part ensures that an outward disposition is created for the bill, which, passed, which when passed will help Nigeria compete favorably in the international committee. The sixth part of the bill deals with searches, arrests, and prosecution. This is a follow-up on the fourth part of the bill, which espouses administration and enforcement, which ensures that the reel of justice is completed in proper administration and implementation of the bill. The seventh part deals with the miscellaneous part of the bill as regards regulation and schedules. This digital rights and freedom bill, when passed to law, will show the seriousness of the Nigerian polity 
in its readiness to have due respect to human rights, attract trust and integrity for foreign investment, and place Nigeria within the digital ec ecosystem it belongs to, and push the global ICT for development goals. The following is the justification of the bill, for the bill. A number of reasons justify the drafting of the Digital Rights Bill, which I believe should encourage its speedy passage into law. The following are some of the benefits that will accrue, accrue from the bill. The bill strengthens citizens' rights to internet and its free use without undue monitoring. The bill brings to the fore true owners of personal data, which are the owners themselves. The bill encourages and stipulates due process that should be followed before access is granted to governmental agencies and others to personal data of citizens. Nigerian citizens will now have a right to know how data collected about their participation in the online system will be used by organizations. The bill provides clear definition for new digital terms such as protection of personal data and engage the terms exhaustively. For the first time, there is a direct provision that tackles how consent must be gotten for collection, use, and disclosure of personal data, including that of us legislators. The bill also provides against hate speech online in Nigeria. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, and by extension Africa, offenses relating to the ownership of personal data, hate speech, and online is addressed through the instrumentality of, the piece of this piece of legislation. It's called the Digital Rights Bill. In recent times, the online platform has become a haven for unscrupulous persons to encroach into the personal space of law-abiding citizens of this country and publishing online content that are capable of defaming and assassinating the character and reputation of persons who have become victims of massive media onslaught. For the first time in Africa, the bill addresses equal access to be given to everyone to the internet. This will assist the Nigerian ICT sector to propel its innovative ideas that is most needed to drive the sector to maximize its pot potentials. This piece of legislation provides for e-governance, which refers to the application of information technology for delivery of government services. Also, this serves as a melting point for PPP, which will help transit Nigeria from a state-controlled economy to a market economy that drives a 21st century compliant economy. Beyond the foregoing, Nigeria has a huge demographic, economic, and pol political influence in, in Africa. The federal government in Nigeria intends to further extend this, this their leadership position. And this bill, this bill will truly help Nigeria perform that function. The social media has become a platform where everyone can participate as equals in political debates and so forth, and where everyone has a voice and an audience. It is leading to personal growth, and codifying online rights in Nigeria will not only encourage participation, but also promote innovation in Nigeria through access to cutting-edge research from around the world. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleague, colleagues, in the light of the above facts, I humbly so solicit your support for the second reading of this bill. There's nothing controversial in this bill, but we just want to protect the rights of online users. Mr. Speaker, I so submit.